our first step is to place some topical anesthetic. This is a, a very profound topical anesthetic that we obtained from a compounding pharmacy. It's composed of 10% lidocaine, 10% prelocaine, 4% tetracaine, and 2% phenylephrine. The phenylephrine is a vasoconstrictor. It helps retain the topical anesthetic in the field and that also helps with any hemostasis control. Once the topical anesthetic has been in place, um, again for three or four minutes, we're going to wipe that off. We prefer to wipe it off rather than rinse it off just because it is so profound. Um, there's not really any reason to have it going all over the mouth. We're going to follow up the topical anesthetic with 0.15 cc's of lidocaine uh, using the Serajet. It's placed flush against the tissue and the local anesthetic solution is expressed under pressure into the tissue. Now we're going to place the mini screw. Uh, we position the tip of the screw just below the mucogingival junction and in front of the first molar. We have a slight angulation up. We'd like the screw head to be relatively flush with the cortical bone. And then the last thing we're going to do is check, I'm going to have you open a little bit, Gabe, with an occlusal mirror, open slightly more. An occlusal mirror for angulation, mesially or distally, to ensure that we have the correct direction of the mini screw as it passes mesial to the first molar. Okay, now we're just going to press, you'll feel a little pressure, Gabe. At this point in time, I'm applying pressure to initiate what I call the catch. The threads have actually captured the cortical plate, and right now I've relieved some of the pressure that I'm placing on the mini screw and letting the rotations of the, the screw threads pull the mini screw uh, in, into position through the cortical bone. And if you notice, the, the head of the driver is now flush with the tissue, and that's typically where we um, know that the screw head is probably driven to the right depth. And then we're going to remove that. We're going to evaluate the emergence profile. Uh, we're trying to determine is the screw positioned uh, in enough? Is it sticking out? Is it the right angle? Okay, now we're going to go ahead and place uh, the contralateral side. And again, the same position, just uh, at the mucogingival junction, mesial to the first molar. Initiate with a little pressure. And then once again, the threads catch the cortical bone. It's, it's very easily pulls its way in. We go, we get the head close to the tissue. So what we've done at this point in time is we've actually placed a uh, full-size rectangular arch wire, uh, and that's to maintain the occlusal plane and avoid buckling of the arch wire as we apply the retraction forces. Um, and we've also placed a sliding post onto the main arch wire. Now, this post is placed in a configuration that will allow it to actually slide on the arch wire uh, and we've ligated it with a metal ligature up to the cuspid just mesial to that and what that's going to allow us to do is retract the cuspid um, and close space while at the same time opening space for the missing lateral. The really neat thing about the vector task system is that we have the uh, matching auxiliaries and springs to go with the, the kit and it allows us to take um, the delta eyelet and place it over the delta head very simply. And we're going to bring it forward and hook it onto the post. Like that. That's a five millimeter single delta spring that has 150 grams of force. And so now we're going to have a retraction force near to the center of the resistance of the teeth that will cause uh, relatively pure translation as we close the spaces. One really neat thing about the, uh, the system posts are that it allows us, first of all, they're flat, so it's a really nice smooth contour to the cheeks and lips, but it also has the ability to be contoured. So if we want to like slightly contour the, the post in a little bit, we can go in with a little, for example, a tweed loop plier and bring the posts in tighter to the tissue.